All right, class, I'm going to walk you through the process of how we find the epicenter of an earthquake. Remember, the epicenter is where the earthquake originates from. I like to think of it as like dropping a pebble into a pool of water. Where the pebble hits, the earthquake or the waves will radiate out uh, in a circular motion. So what we look at, these waves that come out, there's two different waves. A P wave, which stands for primary, and a secondary wave, uh, which is the S wave. Now, because they travel at different speeds, a P wave is much faster than an S wave. Um, the further away a recording station is from the epicenter of an earthquake, that bigger that gap is going to be between when those two wave hits. So if we have like a P wave and then immediately after an S wave hits, super close to the earthquake. If we have a P wave hits and then minutes, minutes later, the S wave hits, it's further away. So each one of these is just going to kind of help us locate where an earthquake started. Now, at minimum, you need three different recording stations to triangulate its location. So I'm going to walk you through the process of how we uh, figure that out. So it's a kind of a multi-step process. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to look at the seismograph. And the trick with this is you have to be as accurate as possible. You don't want to round because that's going to produce a lot of air into your, um, into your map. You know, and then your, your circles, as you'll see later, won't line up right. So I'm going to take just kind of a flat edge of a scrap sheet of paper. And if you notice, if I place this right where the P wave starts, I'm going to put a little mark down right there. And then I'm going to put a little mark on that graph where uh, the S wave hits. Now, some of you might want to round. Do not do that, like I said before. Don't put just three here. And that's a little bit more than three. So when I look down at this table here, I'll write Denver for the location that I'm doing. Our S wave, as we see here, happens a little bit after 3. So I'm going to write 3.2 after we started recording there. Um, and then if we look at the S wave hit, it's not 6. Don't write 6. You're going to want to write 5.9. And again, you want to get as accurate and as close as possible. Okay. Now let's see what we got for Spokane, it's out in Washington. Again, we do that same exact process. Put a mark there, put a mark there. And we can see for Spokane, not quite two, a little bit more than two. So for Spokane, again, we can see a little bit more than two. I'm going to put 2.1. So then we had 2.1, excuse me, for Spokane for the P arrival time. For the S arrival time, we can see that's pretty much right at 4. So I can go ahead and write 4 seconds for that S arrival time. Now we have left is our Salt Lake City. Again, same exact process to see when that first one hits. Second one. Looking right here, I can see that's about 1.5 when that first P wave hits. And that S wave hits at about 3.2. 3.1 or so uh, minutes. Now what we do is just a little bit of math. We're going to find that difference because that's going to help us figure out the, the distance from when that earthquake happened. So S minus P. So for this one, I'm going to take 5.9 minus 3.2, and we get left with 2.7. So that's the gap between when the P or the S and P wave hits. For this one, we have 2.1 minus, excuse me, 4 minus 2.1, and we're left with 1.9 seconds, or 1 minute 9 seconds, or 0.9 seconds after that hit. Then for Salt Lake City, we have 3.2 minutes minus 1.5, and then that hit 1.7 minutes away from each other. So looking at this, I can tell you that that earthquake is closer to Salt Lake City than it is for Denver because that gap is bigger. Now, Spokane's going to be kind of in the middle. So now, to figure out this last box, distance from the epicenter, we need to use these numbers and this graph, where it says earthquake, P wave, and S wave travel time. All right, this is probably the harder part of this. Um, so what we do, we take a blank sheet of you know scrap paper. First thing I like to do is just draw a line on it, write the letter P. All right, so you're going to do that. You're going to match this up. Right here, you're going to match this right up onto the y-axis. Start it right at zero. You want that P right at zero. And again, accuracy is important. 
If you're a little bit off, that's going to mess with your number. And we saw that Denver uh, happened 2.7 seconds later. So if I go here, 2.7. Right around there on that graph. That's about 2.5, a little bit more right here. So we put that S mark. Now we're going to slide this piece of paper, and we're going to keep this P line right here right on that part of that graph for the P wave. And we're going to slide it until both the P and S wave match on the graph. So if I look real close, I can see that right here is where we have our match. We need to make sure that this is straight up and down and vertical. I look down on this graph, and I see that that mark hits right here at 1,400 kilometers. So I'm going to mark that here, 1,400 kilometers. Now I know that says 1 and 2, but remember if you look here, that's 10 to the third power. So that's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and so on. So now we know that that earthquake happened 1,400 kilometers away from Denver. Now let's figure out Spokane. Spokane we figured out was 1.9 seconds. So again, I'm putting that P right at the bottom of that graph, right on 1. And I'm going to match that up. 1.9 seconds later, a little less than 2. Okay, and we're going to slide again. And we're going to hit right around there. 2, 4, 6, 8. I see that that's about... For Spokane, we get about 8,800, excuse me, kilometers. So again, match that up. We see that that line matches at right there. Put that line on that graph, and we can see that 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 hits at 1.8 kilometer or one, or excuse me, 800 kilometers. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at Salt Lake City. And we saw that Salt Lake City hits at 1.7 seconds. Again, use our scrap sheet of paper, put a line for the P, and we're going to find 1.7 seconds. Slide it again. We already know that that's going to be less than Spokane. That's going to match up. Excuse me, right there. Right here. Again, less than Spokane, that's about 6,000 or 600 kilometers away. Now what we have to do is we have these distances. We know that's how far away each of the earthquakes happen from the epicenter. We have to map this on our U.S. map. So I can look right here and find each one of those cities. Here's Spokane, here's Denver, and here's Salt Lake. Now we have to draw circles that match up to that. That's where we use our compass. The bottom of the map, you're always going to have a graph that shows you, or a line that shows you scale. So we know that Denver was 1,400 kilometers. Here's 1,500, maybe a little less, 1,400. And I draw my line. from Denver. So we know that somewhere on this circle right here that I just drew, that earthquake happened. I don't know whether it's north, south, east, or west. I know it's somewhere on that circle. Now as we start to draw, as we start to draw the other circles, we see that for Spokane it was about 800 kilometers. Again, we look here, 500, 750, 800 is right around there. So from Spokane, again, we're going to draw our circle. It's lined up. Really, I only have to draw it on the map. If you're going off the map, you can just kind of not worry about that part of the circle. So now we've got two collision points. We have one up here in Canada, which isn't on the map, and we want to have one over here. Now, if this all fits, we know that that third point, because obviously this map only shows this part of the United States, it's probably going to collide right here. So let's double check this with our Salt Lake, which we know that that radius should be 600 kilometers. Again, I'm going to make sure my compass is at about 600 kilometers, right around there. Go to our Salt Lake City. Let's draw our circle. 
and we see that our collision is pretty much right there. So all three of those lines hit right in this area. We know that that is our epicenter. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or watch this video again. Again, you can just follow along right through this. Um, good luck.